Okay. Uh, let me start by asking you a question. When you hear Greece as a tourist, what are the two things that come to your mind? Well, I don't know what your answer is, but my answer would be uh, first the Greek islands and Greece has 6,000 islands and beautiful weather in the summer. So it's a very popular destination. And the other one is of course the Greek antiquities. Oops, I don't know if I pronounced right. Anyway, I'm showing here the Parthenon and I want to tell you that I grew up in my house in Athens. I was 10 minutes walking distance from the Parthenon. Every morning I'll step out of the house, look to my left, oh, there's the Parthenon still standing. But today I want to tell you about a place that not many people know. Uh, it's a kind of a mystical place in central Greece. And this place is, drum roll, Meteora. That's the name of this place. Now, what exactly is Meteora and why should we bother to visit? Now, if you ask Google, it will tell you that uh, Meteora is in central Greece, about 360 kilometers north of Athens. And it's known for two things. First is geography. It has those amazing Greek formations very high out of the ground, and also the monasteries that are built at the top. So I don't know a lot about uh, geology, but I can tell you a little bit about the history of those monasteries. It started about uh, the ninth century where monks, a group of monks settled inside caves in those rocks. And in this picture here, you can see uh, those caves. And starting in 13th century, the monks built the monasteries. At the peak of the 16th century, there were 24 monasteries. Today, only six are still functioning. And three of those six are actually seen in this picture. Now you might say, why? Why did they build the monasteries at the top of rocks? Well, they did that on purpose. They want to isolate themselves from the rest of the world. So up high on the rock, they're closer to the heaven and away from people bothering them so they can concentrate on, on their religion. Uh, and what does the word uh, meteora means, by the way? And my uh, family mispronounce it meteora, but in Greek it's meteora and it's like meteorite. It means suspended in the air. And this is the impression that you get when you see those monasteries, they're suspended in the air. Now, how do you access those monasteries at the top of the rocks? <laughs> this is an interesting stair of view by uh, Underwood and Underwood from 1897. They saw a visitor in the monastery <laughs> being pulled up inside this rope, not very comfortable, but this is the way people could get up there back then. Well, thankfully for us, they built roads around 1920. They built roads so all these monasteries now can be accessed through a road. I told you that uh, the six monasteries are still functioning and there are about 60 monks and nuns living in those six operating monasteries. They, they are open to the public, but they take turns. No, so not every monastery is open every day, but you need at least two days if you want to visit all six. So what do those uh, monks do there? Well, typically they get, wake up early in the morning they eat and pray together and they, they do their sound duties. I try to have this converted in 3D. Uh, not much depth, but anyway. And then at night, I guess uh, they read, write, meditate, pray. So that's their life. Also, those monasteries are important for the Greek Orthodox Church. They have a lot of treasured items and there's a museum. You can visit the museum. You can see the displays. You can read more about the history of this place. And of course, you cannot help but admire the iconography inside the church. Even though I told you that the monasteries can be accessed by cars and roads and stairs, there is some, they have, some of them have poly cars like this one that can transport visitors. And while I was there, I witnessed people actually getting in the thing. <laughs> Four people can fit in this uh, cable car. Now, in addition to the six operating monasteries, you have the abandoned ones. And some of the abandoned ones can be accessed 
through trails and you can hire a guide to take you there. And I think they're organized tours too. Uh, what kind of pictures do you expect to take? What kind of cameras to use? Well, if your only camera is your phone, you will do great in this place because you have the opportunity to take hyper stereos of the monasteries of nature, close up pictures of items inside the monasteries. This is my daughter using her uh, phone to take a picture and from the same spot, I took this hyper. Also, if you have a Fuji or an ordinary camera that helps if you want to include people and, and moving objects, basically any kind of photography, you can do a, a lot of different types. There's nature around there. Now, what's the best time to visit Meteora? I've been there only twice. Actually, the first time I went was in 2016. I was 57 years old. And that's the first time I went to, to this place. Um, my daughter liked it so much that she wanted to go back. And we went last, last summer. She got married and we went with her husband in the summer. So I've seen it both in November, which is the middle of the fall and the summer. And I can tell you, anytime you go, you're gonna have a good time and you're gonna take great pictures. The fall is a little bit better because of the color of nature. My wife insisted that I tell you about this monastery, the Monastery of Holy Trinity, <laughs> because it was used in the 1981 James Bond movie for your eyes only. That's a little bit of trivia. Now, we went there in our last visit in the summer. You might say, well, how do you get there? Well, there are roads and steps. And I can tell you there are a lot of steps. So you have to be in pretty good shape to climb or take your time. And this is my daughter and her new husband from our visit in the summer. Another thing I want to tell you as a tourist, both times we visited Meteora, we rented a car from Athens, and in our, other, in our way there, or in the way back, we stopped at Delphi. Delphi is the center of the ancient civilization. They had the Delphi Games, similar to the Olympic Games, and of course they're famous for Pythia and the oracles. So that's an interesting place to visit, and it's, it's in the way to uh, Meteora. And finally, where to stay? There are a lot of places to stay. Both times we stayed in this Hotel Kastraki, which is, as you can see, really close to, to Meteora. And the good thing about Greece, especially for the American visitor, is that accommodation and food is very inexpensive. As an American, I go there, I cannot believe what you can get <laughs> in terms of hotel and food. Well, that concludes my presentation. I hope I gave you an idea maybe to put this unique place in your schedule next time you visit Greece. And I'll show you, I'll show you some of the pictures you, you expect to take. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try and answer them. <laughs>